Hi, Marcel, the wood butcher again. Marcel F, the wood butcher. Uh, yeah, this is a double treat. I decided that I'm also going to give an instructional video for any of you people out there that happen to have a shop that has a water issue and basically how to manage your pumps. You'll have to give me a second here while I go to my wall and I take off the instructor's hat because this is going to be an instructional video. Uh, so you're going to have to bear with me one second while I park my butt down in the easy chair. Yeah, that's me without a hat on. I ain't a real pretty person. I would never min well, win Miss Mr. Universe or anything like that, but... And again, I say, these damn things are hard to put on one-handed, because I'm doing this by my lonesome. Okay? What we're going to talk about today is, if you have a water issue in your shop or in your home, and if you don't have submersible pumps that are where the, the drainage pipes are buried below the freeze line, I'm going to teach you a little secret how to get around that. For instance, in my garage, I don't have permanent sub pumps in there. I have a portable sub pump that I move from low point to low point and pump the water out. The key, don't leave it out when it's really frigid weather overnight or once you get it pumped out to a manageable level unplug the pump take the time to raise the pump above your shoulder and then walk the hose length the rest of the way while the end of the hose is still in the street yard wherever it happens to be mine happens to be in the street right? and drain all the water out of it so that it just trickles it won't freeze on you if you have a temporary sub pump that's uh... let's say in one of your basements or lower levels that you get water in do the same thing do yourself a favor put hose clamps on there with the 12 millimeter or 3 eighths or close to 3 eighths, whatever, whatever the hell millimeters come to, but it seems like all whole hose clamps come in millimeters now. Nobody wants to use 3 eighths, 5 sixteenths, quarter inch, any of that anymore. You know, it's all 10 millimeter, 7 millimeter, 9 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Who cares? Who cares? But don't use a screwdriver. Because you notice that most of those hose clamps are made for a slotted screwdriver. You know, the ones that have the, the straight blade that goes across. They're a pain in a, eh, the butt to tighten down. Find yourself a socket with a quarter inch drive. Three eighths drive, <laughs> you're going to mangle it, right? But a quarter inch drive socket that fits the nut. Now they've even gotten more clever with some of the hose clamps. They don't have the hex heads on some of them. They're rounded. So what you do when you buy hose clamps, if you need to use pumps and hoses, make sure, make double damn sure, you get the ones that are either Phillips head or common head or some of them come in a combination, but they're either... I have found they're either 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, millimeter, or 7 millimeter. Get a quarter inch drive ratchet set and a quarter inch drive ratchet. God, it makes the hose chasing process so much easier. And here's where I say the hose changing process. If you live in a climate like I do, this winter, the hoses are out there, but they freeze. So what do you do? What, you're going to thaw it out there with a heat gun? You're going to pull it out under 18 inches of snow and ice 
and, and throw it out with a heat gun? I don't think so. Or are you going to run to the store and spend $30 for an extra 50 foot of new hose? Let's not do that either, right? Same principle. Take your hose. If you have above the freeze line and it's along the ground like mine is right now because I wasn't in the budget to bury it below the freeze line, going through a lot of renovations, had to do what we had to do. So, yeah, I have two hoses. But what I learned, drain the water out of them. Take the extra minute for your temporary sub pump that you use every now and then. If you're an idiot and leave the hose outside and you pick it up and it's a block of ice, your fault. When you're done pumping out what you have to pump out, and believe me, I do this in my shop quite often, put the pump on top. Let, let it drain out for where it cleaned up because you know a pump is only going to go to an eighth of an inch of the water or whatever. Put the pump up on a four-foot ladder. Carry the hose the rest of the length to the street Keeping a downward motion, you know, kind of like this, like a limp, no, I won't even go there. But, you know, and, and just boom, boom, boom. See if the water, and, and you can feel if the hose is empty or not as you're traveling along. If the hose is empty and the water's coming out the other end, coil it up and bring it back inside or in your garage. Or someplace. As long as it has no water in it, it's not going to freeze. Uh, for those of you that have temporary sub pumps in your basements or something like that, do the same damn thing. However, if you're coming off a PVC pipe that your sub pump is hard piped into, do yourself a favor. Put a rubber coupler and the cheap hose on there. Disconnect it. Before it freezes, boom. Drain the water out. Drain the water out. The ultimate is, and I mean the ultimate, and you'll never have a problem with freezing in your pipes where water flow can't take place. If your pumps discharge diameter is one and a quarter inch or two inch use a minimal of four inch PVC buried or you know to drain it out because what happens there yeah the ambient water in the pipe will freeze but it's not gonna fill a three to four inch cavity so the other water will still flow across and actually help to melt the built-up ice that's in that discharge hose or piping, whatever you choose to call it, at the same time. This is what I want to graduate to. But unfortunately, in the middle of the crisis, I can't do it. But this is what is going to be done when I revamp the shop in the spring. If any of you want any advice on pumping, please. I don't consider myself a professional, but I'm very, very experienced in it. I go through it quite often, and, and, and unfortunately, in my shop. If you know you have a water problem in your shop, Keep your lumber raised. You know what the level is going to be. If it's two inches of water you get, if it's three inches, if it's four inches, or in my case, sometimes I get up to like six to eight inches. I have everything raised. Everything's raised. What do I use to raise it? <laughs> Pallets. 
small pallets, the cheap ones, not the ones that I'm taking apart to use to build stuff out of, but the cheapies, the cheapy pine ones that are, they're crap anyway. Raise it up. Set of casters. Take your, if you have a, uh, uh, let's say you have a, a, uh, a drill press or a uh, bandsaw that you have on a shop-made platform or tabletop, whatever, right? Cut it shorter. Put rubber casters on the bottom. They're going to save you about two inches. Two inches may not sound like a lot, but I'd rather have the rubber wet than the supports of my tables. If you have any other questions on what to do or want to go into detail of how I am solving the problem, please feel free to contact or comment. And uh, I'll help you out as best I can. It's a, it's a problem I'm very experienced with. This time, I'm not in my shop. Yes, I am sitting in... <laughs> the comfort of, of my lower-level family room, okay? But once again, this is Marcel. I, oh, and the reason that I'm sitting in the comfort of my lower family room, I got tired of pumping water. I got it all pumped out for the time being, and I wanted to get a little warm, a little dry, enjoy a little, uh, a little cocktail, and uh, celebrate the fruits of my labors. Okay. So, once again, this is Marcel, the wood butcher. Good night and Semper Fi.